Welcome to the um, Leverage and Capital Structure session. Now, in this session, uh, we're going to discuss different topics such as leverage, capital structure, and we'll also do some break-even analysis. We're going to look at the operating break-even point in a little bit more detail, and al uh, along with, we are going to look at the costs as well. Now, so what is leverage? Leverage refers to the effects that fixed costs have on the returns that shareholders earn. Now, what is fixed cost? Fixed costs are costs that do not rise and fall with the changes in the firm sales. We already know that uh, the cost of a firm is generally divided into two parts. There's a fixed cost and variable cost. Variable changes with the number of sales, while fixed cost remains same. Now, firms have to pay these fixed costs whether these business conditions are good or bad. Now, let's discuss it a little bit more in detail. If the business conditions are good, then what we expect the firms to have a high variable cost and a low fixed cost. Why this is the case? Because firms do not want to tie up a lot of cost in fixed cost since in good business condition, the cost will tend to go down as the volume increases and, uh, and, and, and uh, at, on account of fixed cost, there will be favorable conditions, favorable contracts available so they can reduce it and they can shift the cost to the variable side. In bad conditions, in bad conditions, business conditions, we have um, the variable cost tends to go down while the fixed costs tend to go up. This is to, primarily to provide a hedge against rising costs. And this hedge uh, um, is used normally in bad times. So generally leverage magnifies both returns and risks. So if you increase the fixed cost, the risk increases the risk of tying up capital in fixed cost, which will be, um, which will uh, incur whether good or bad conditions. So the fixed cost in creates risk and that risk increases by increase in the fixed cost. And hence we must be compensated for higher returns. So we already understand that capital structure is the mix of long-term debt and equity maintained by the firm. So in that context, we have different types of leverage. We have operating leverage with financial leverage, and then we have a total leverage. Operating leverage basically is called business risk. It's concerned with the relationship between the firm's sales revenue and EBIT, earning before interest in taxes. While financial leverage is concerned with the relationship between the firm's EBIT and common stock earnings per share. And the total leverage is basically the sum of operating leverage and the financial leverage. Or in essence, what we saw, we can say it's a combined effect of operating and financial leverage. Now let's look at this operating leverage, financial leverage, and total leverage in income statement format. You can see that the income statement has been divided into two parts before EBIT and after EBIT. Before EBIT, the connection is between sales revenue and EBIT and then Financial leverage is the one which is the connection between EP, uh, e, uh, EBIT and the earnings available for common stockholders. Total leverage is the sum of operating plus the financial leverage. You have to understand that in each part, we have to look for the fixed costs that increases will create risk and this risk will be compensated with higher return. Alternatively, if this fixed cost is lower, then we have lower returns. So what is break-even analysis? Break-even analysis is used to indicate the level of operations necessary to cover all costs and to evaluate the profitability associated with various levels of sales. This is also called cost volume profit analysis. Now, we already know the income statement format in which we have sales revenue and then we have the costs of goods sold, we have the gross profit, then minus the operating expenses, then we have EBIT. Now, if you look at this format, the break-even analysis will be the one where we have the operating profit equals to zero. Hence, we call it operating break-even point. And here we have EBIT equals to zero. Then if 
so which variable has to be changed in order to achieve vbit so we have to understand the we have to find out the level of sales so it is the quantity that we have to find out the number of units sold in order to get ebit equals to zero this means that all the expenses are covered and these expenses which are covered cost of goods sold and operating cost now these two if you combine them they will be divided into two parts fixed cost and variable costs and we have to identify those so the first step in finding the operating break even point is to divide the cost of goods sold and operating expenses into fixed and variable operating costs fixed costs are costs that the firm must pay in a given period regardless of the sales volume achieved during that period while variable costs vary directly with sales volume so let's look at this um, in a more uh, understandable format so we have uh, operating leverage which can be uh, started with the sales revenue and then we have to subtract the fixed operating costs and then we have to subtract the variable costs now how do we represent this in terms of uh, the equation so sales revenue is basically the quantity multiplied by the uh, price per unit so this will give us the uh, total sale revenue uh, for a single uh, for, for a total sale revenue for the entire firm then we have the fixed operating cost and fixed operating cost is fixed so we have the same fc we represent it with fc and variable cost we represent with variable cost multiplied by the quantity so quantity is very important because now we have uh, the variable cost increases with the in, uh, with with the uh, quantity so this gives us the ebit so rather than writing into the normal forms like sales minus cost of goods sold divided by the um, profit margin or gross profit minus operating expenses divided by EBIT we reformat this into this form hence we have uh, the EBIT equals to uh, price into quantity this was our sales revenue minus the fixed cost minus variable cost which is also multiplied by the quantity now if ordered to find out the q which is the quantity at which ebit is equal to zero so i have to put zero equals to ebit and because this is what we want the where are all entire operating costs are covered and this um, this part and this has same q so we can combine the two together so we have q into uh, P minus VC and then we have minus FC then finding Q we have Q equals to FC divided by P minus VC so this is the Q which will give us the number of sales units required to cover the cost FC minus uh, FC and variable cost VC so let's do a question assume that CP a small paper retailer has fixed operating costs of $2,500, its sale price is $10 per paper, and its variable uh, operating cost is $5 per paper. What is the firm's break-even? So you have Q equals to FC over P minus VC, and you can see that the fixed cost is $2,500, and then we have the uh, sale price, which is $10. I'll write the dollar signs as well. And then we have minus variable cost, which is uh, the $5 per paper. And this gives us the, um, sorry, not the dollars, but it's the units, 500 units. This is the number of units required to break even. Now let's look at this in a more uh, tabular as well as a graphical form. So when you have slides, you can click and you can see this will go into Excel and you can look into these numbers through Excel perspective. However, right now, let's discuss the conceptual framework. We have this fixed cost, which is 2,500. So uh, across all the, um, we, we have uh, to extend the 
um, axis so we have taken these values over the number of uh, cells then we have variable cost which is also 5 um, and this variable cost will be total variable cost will change with respect to the unit sold so we have the sales unit which is 100 200 300 we have taken with a hundred uh, 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 break and then or hundred jump and uh, then we have total cost which is fixed cost plus variable so we have fixed cost plus variable cost and this variable cost is multiplied by the sales unit so this is total variable cost when you add it you will get so this becomes 500 plus 2500 this becomes 3000 and then you have a sale price which is ten dollars and now revenue is calculated using the sale price multiplied by the sales unit so when you multiply sales unit with the sale price you get this uh, which is the uh, revenue and then you have profit profit is revenue minus total cost which is 2000 loss in the in, in the first uh, category so this is uh, drawn over different values in order to show the lines and you can see that on y-axis we have cost and revenues on the x-axis we have the units now the, uh, the the line is the revenue operating sales revenue and this is the um, total operating uh, cost or total cost and then we have this is the profit and this is the fixed cost now you know fixed cost it is fixed at this point uh, 2500 anything that's a profit and loss starts bef after uh, 2500 and not before so this is the 2500 which is shown here this is the fixed cost now the uh, I'll just a little bit highlight it this is the break-even point so this is the this point is the loss and the point that is break-even is given as it's the break-even point Be below this is a loss and beyond this is profit and you can see that the line that we have drawn will go all the way uh, this is the this is the profit region and this is what we call the um, EBIT so once we cross the uh, break even we'll start making money earning profit now let's look at the uh, sensitivity sensitivity of operating break-even point to increases in key break-even variables so this increase in these variables will uh, uh, will tell us how the break-even point will change so this is the formula for operating uh, leverage which is quantity equals to fixed cost over price minus uh, variable cost so if the fixed cost uh, increases fixed cost increases in this and you can see if the fixed cost increases more units will be required to be sold in order to cover the fixed cost hence the operating break even point will increase similarly if sale price increase so sale price increase this means that we will require less uh, unit to be sold to cover the fixed cost hence the break even point will decrease and if variable operating cost increase then in this case uh, the uh, uh, the the break-even point will also increase because now we have higher variable costs associated with each unit of sales. The decreases in each of these variables are opposite effect on the operating break-even point. Let's look at an example. Assume that CP wishes to evaluate the impact of several options. The first one is increasing fixed operating cost to three thousand. Second is increasing the sale price per unit to twelve point five dollars. Third is increasing the variable operating cost per unit to $7.5 and fourth is simultaneously implementing all of the three strategies so what will happen you can see that in the first case the break-even move from 500 this is the break-even point um, earlier that we uh, calculated now it goes to increase to 600 if we increase the fixed cost if we increase the um, the sale price so we increase the sale price from 10 to 12.5 dollars 
and hence the units have decreased. Uh, so break even point fell down to 333 from 500. Now operating break even point will be uh, increase to 1000 units if variable cost increases from $5 to $7.5. Similarly, the operating break even point will have a different uh, change. However, what we see is that if fixed cost chain increases, the uh, price increases and the variable cost increases all in all the entire uh, break even point will also increase so that's uh, it thank you so in this session we have covered essentially uh, the most important topic is operating break even point we also introduced leverage and capital structure and uh, uh, let's go into more detail about operating financial leverage and total leverage in the next session thank you